While browsing through the Creation Club, we come across Necromatic Grimoire. This creation comes with 13 new conjuration spells, along with a few apparel items. In this video, we'll take a look at all of the new apparel items, along with every summon this creation comes with, and we'll see if that 100 credit price tag is really worth it. As a quick side note, I have every perk unlocked in the conjuration tree, so that all the magicka costs in this video will be cut in half, unless you have those perks as well. First up is the Ancient Death Priest. The Death Priest will use powerful magic spells, raise the dead, and will be alive for 120 seconds. When he expires or is killed, three Summoned Shades will appear to fight for you. The Summoned Shades are more like powerful skeletons. The Death Priest himself looks like a regular Dragon's Priest, but in a shadowy form. He has menacing red eyes and looks like he wants to kill absolutely everything. Next up is the Bone Colossus. This spell summons a giant skeleton while also allowing the player to do some pretty cool stuff. The Bone Colossus can shout and use smashing blows to stagger the enemy for a while. However, it can get pretty chaotic if used indoors. When this spell is active, the player can summon up to three more skeleton summons at the same time to create a mini army. If you have the dual casting perk, you can actually cast a fourth one, but the Colossus will die. But it's really cool how you can do this. It is also good to note that you can only summon one Bone Colossus at a time, even with the dual casting perk. So you can't get like eight skeletons at a time. It doesn't work like that. The Skeleton Champion is an adept spell that summons a skeleton that can get up to 50% more attack depending on how many enemies are nearby. He struts around in his full ironclad armor with an iron greatsword. This summon can benefit from the Bone Colossus effect. Now, the Skeleton Marksman. This spell will summon a skeleton with a bow that can weaken enemies with its attacks. However, it is not said how potent the weakness effect is, nor if it has the ability to stack, nor the duration, so you really just have to trust it. He sports a trusty hide helmet with some slick hide bracers. He appears to use steel arrows and an imperial bow, but his damage will be scaled with your conjuration skill, so pretty cool. The skeleton minion has the lowest cost out of all of these new spells, and it's a pretty bland one. It's just a skeleton that has a steel axe and an iron shield. Nothing more to say about it. It's, it's really what it looks like. Next up is a skeleton warlock. He is a skeleton that uses shock magic to take down his foes. He sports a pretty dope hood, but that's really all to talk about. Next on the list is the Tomb Guardian. Whenever this guy notches a kill, he will summon a shade of the thing that he just killed to fight for your party. A shade is basically a weaker version of the original in like a weird ghostly form. He wields a ghostly headsman's axe while he walks around in an executioner outfit. He is inter interestingly a little bit taller than the player, reminding me of the Ebony Warrior in a way. Pretty cool. Next up is possibly my favorite spell in the entire creation, the Undying Ghost. The Undying Ghost consumes all of your magic when summoned, but it gets more powerful depending on how much you used. This is a great early game spell. The Undying Ghost uses some weird ancient armor that I haven't seen in the game yet. He also uses a ghostly ancient Nordic sword to cut down his enemies with. It's also great to know that you can find a guaranteed Undying Ghost spell tome at the Ritual Stone. Next up is a pretty redundant spell in my opinion, 
It is called the Necromancer's Ritual. After casting, it grants the user 30 points of magicka and health every time a reanimated corpse or summon dies or expires. It can be useful in a pinch. If you want to spam cast your spells, you can get magicka and health pretty quickly back. But other than that, I don't really see the whole point to this. Here is how it works. Next up is Soul Split. When the player uses Soul Split on a friendly conjured, they die and they turn into two Sundered Shades to fight for you. I only recommend you use this spell on, you know, the Skeletal Minion or a summon you think is weak. But it works on anybody, but you can't Soul Split a Sundered Shade, so you can't duplicate them into a million. Our last spell is a Haunted Spirit. When the Haunted Spirit dies, she'll provide the player with stat boosts from the enemy that killed her. Great to use against bosses and other tough enemies. She carries a knife blade that she uses in battle, but she also has very low HP and armor, making it really easy for her to steal the stats of her enemies. Let's talk about the new apparel items that go with the creation. You can get the Masked Necromancer Hood, the regular Necromancer, Necromancer Hood and Robes, and the Runic Re Necromancer Robes. These robes can be found off of higher level Conjurers, and they have a guaranteed spawn in a cave just northeast of Dawnstar. Here I am, showcasing the Masked Hood and the Runic Robes. You can buy all these spells from Finnish Guest Store in the College of Winterhold. There are some level requirements, and for some of the spells, you need to complete Finnish's quest after getting a Conjuration 100 and talking to him. The highest level requirements are around level 45, when you can unlock the, one, the Bone Colossus and the Death Priest. Just to be clear, there are two spells that I am not showing today. The spell tome, Cursed Spectre, won't show up in Finnis' Gester's inventory. This may be just a quirk in my game save, and, you know, it'll probably work for you, but it didn't for me. The spell Banish Undead is really self-explanatory, and probably doesn't require a demonstration for y'all to know what it does. So, we'll leave it at that. Now this begs the question, is this creation worth it? In my opinion, this is the best thing you can spend 100 credits on in the Creation Club store. But you really have to be interested in magic to use it. If you never use Conjuration Magic, you're not going to like this creation. But I do believe that this fills an empty hole in the Conjuration uh, skill tree. I mean, even in the base game, the Dragonborn can only use a small selection of Astronox, Dremora, and a Familiar. DLC helps with that, but truthfully, it is not enough. I was also really hoping for like a new bound weapon, maybe a shield or something in this creation, but I'm a little disappointed it doesn't come with that. Overall, I'm really happy that this creation exists and I would gladly pay 100 credits if I didn't have the anniversary edition already installed. There are also no bugs or glitches with this creation. All the summons seem to work as intended. And that is it for the Necromatic Grimoire creation. Thank you all for watching and please subscribe and like the video for I plan to review most if not all of the creations in the Creation Club, especially the ones added in the anniversary update. Thank you for watching and have a great day.